This is, a, this is the beginning of podcast number six on chapter three in the Graham Holt Hale Parker textbook. The actual title of this chapter is Skill Themes, Movement Concepts, and the National Standards of Physical Education. That's because this particular chapter is not only about the movement concepts, but it's about the relationship between all three of these uh, particular parts. We've already talked quite a lot about the skill themes, so we're going to concentrate on the movement concepts in this chapter and how they work with the skill themes. One of the main themes of this particular course, as well as other courses that you'll take throughout your time at Winthrop, is that we need to try to differentiate instruction for all of the children in the class. In other words, adjusting the activities to meet the needs of the individual students in the class, which is not an easy thing to do. Children are not automatically grouped into grade levels by their physical abilities. You will have a wide range of physical abilities within every class that you teach. So it's important to try to teach them at their level and try to reach them at their level. The second bullet here will help you immensely in trying to design your lessons this semester. In elementary school, the emphasis is placed on practicing fundamental motor and sports skills rather than looking at the rules or structures of the sports. In other words, we don't teach them about basketball rules and the three second rule and uh, the 10 second rule and free throw rules and rebounding rules and those kinds of things. We teach them about dribbling. We teach them about passing or throwing and catching and those fundamental things that they need to know how to do by the time they get to late elementary school or into middle school. The third bullet here is very important. Skill themes are analogous to or parallel to verbs. They're locomotor skills, non-manipulative skills or manipulative skills. They're dribbling, passing, shooting, throwing, catching, and so on. The movement concepts are parallel to or similar to adverbs. Space awareness, effort, and relationships. All of the parts of those three movement concepts describe how an action is actually performed. At what level, high, medium, or low? and what direction, forward, backward, sideways, and so on. This first bullet is very important for us because this is about us and what we're teaching at St. John's and at McFeet. In the primary grades, those are the early grades, kindergarten through second grade, movement concepts are taught before skill themes are taught. We want to try to get them to get the cognitive concepts of, of space, effort and relationships and then we concentrate on the skill themes to try to teach them about those movement concepts. The movement analysis framework wheel which you have in your book and I gave you a copy of it, the blue and green circle, describes how the skill themes and the movement concepts interact. The spirals in your textbook outline a developmentally appropriate progression for each of the skill themes that are in the book. Each of the skill themes have their own chapter in the textbook and it starts at the lowest level pre-control at the bottom of the spiral and goes to the top proficiency which is the highest level of proficiency. Children Moving is the textbook and it aligns directly with the national and the South Carolina state standards. The goal, of course, for every physical education teacher is to teach students skills that they can use outside of school to be uh, physically active for a lifetime. They need to develop competency in the basic motor skills so that they'll have the confidence to try and enjoy a variety of skills later on, uh, skills in the sports later on. You focus on practicing the skills rather than the rules and the structure of the game. You increase the amount of practice opportunities that they have. Remember, practice makes perfect. And we try to get them to be successful at skills before they can play them in a game. Any fundamental physical skill or movement that you would need for a sport or an activity would be considered a skill theme if it is a verb. They are subdivided into those three different categories, locomotor movements, which are things like traveling, running, skipping, 
jogging, leaping, and so on, non-manipulative skills like balance, and manipulative skills like throwing and catching and so on. This table is also in your textbook and it's actually helpful to you all, I believe, uh, in trying to look at the skill themes and how they would be used in sports later on. Many of you may not have thought about, if you are a softball player, how many times you chase, flee, and dodge, how many times you travel, how many times you jump and land, how many times you might transfer weight, and so on. So those are things that are done, those are fundamental movement skills for softball. And obviously throwing and catching would be in that too. If your favorite sport is not on here, you might want to think about and list how each of the skill themes relate to that particular sport. One thing that's important to remember about these verbs or action words known as skill themes, these skills are transferred between activities. In other words, you use throwing in football, in basketball, in softball, and a variety of other sports. You use catching in many different sports also. You don't use kicking as in, in as many sports, but it is between soccer and football that you do kicking, and so on. So it's important to try to think about how many different sports and, and games and activities that the students that you're going to be teaching are going to be involved with. It's important to teach them the efficient movements that go along with them. I like to think of the movement concepts as the context or the environment of how skills are going to be practiced. In other words, what is the best way to try to teach students to dribble a basketball? What's the context or an environment that they're going to be in? Are they going to have to do that at a low level? Are they going to have to do it at a high level? Are they going to have to do it in curved pathways or straight pathways? And so on. So the pathways and the curves and the high and low levels all, are all having to do with space awareness. So those are the things that we need to teach them about in preschool. After teaching them the theme or the movement concept, it's important then to let them practice those movement concepts using a variety of skill themes. These are the three different levels or categories of skill themes and you can see most of the skill themes are all under those different categories and they are verbs. The skill themes have three functions. They link skills to movement concepts. They link one skill to another and they link the context of the game, gymnastics, or dance content. Later on in our semester, you're going to be doing a peer presentation or teaching presentation uh, to the rest of the class on a particular skill theme. The first category of skill themes, of course, is the locomotor movements. Some of you have already signed up for traveling, chapter 16 chasing, fleeing, and dodging, chapter 17. Second category is non-manipulative, jumping and landing, some of you have signed up for, chapter 19. Balancing, chapter 20. Transferring weight and rolling, chapter 21. And examples of different activities are listed underneath each of these chapters. And lastly, the category of manipulative skills throwing and catching in chapter 23, kicking and punting in chapter 22, volleying and dribbling chapter 24, striking with rackets and paddles which are shorter handles chapter 25, and striking with longer ha handled implements chapter 26. All of your peer teaching emphases will be done later in the semester and you've already been assigned the chapter pages to use for all of your tasks. These again are the movement concepts in physical education, space awareness, where the body moves, effort, how the body moves, and relationships with whom or what the body moves. Those are the movement concepts that are also the cognitive concepts or content to be taught to the students you're teaching them how to move. Our first set of lessons will be about self-space and general space, uh, talking about safety also, which is the hardest thing for us to, to deal with, 
but it's the most the highest priority that you should have during your lessons. Location is in self space, general space, forward, backward, sideways, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, which may be kindergarten through second graders may not know the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise. The different levels, pathways, and extensions. Chapter 14 is about effort or how the body moves, fast, slow, strong, light. And relationships are chapter 15 of body parts with objects, with people, and so on. Very important concepts to know. As we've seen already in class, the movement wheel, or movement analysis framework is what it's called, is based on an analysis of human movement. It describes how the skill themes and the movement concepts interact with one another. The inner circle contains the skill themes, the outer circle contains the movement concepts. A rotation of the wheel allows the same movement concept to modify many different skills. The components of the inner circle becomes the focus of the individual lessons. As the outside of the wheel is rotated around, it shows the same movement concept can be applied to every skill theme that's on the inner circle. The progression spiral found in every skill theme chapter outlines a progression for each of the skill themes from the bottom, which is or the lowest, which is easiest, to the highest, which is more difficult. The progression goes from simple to more complex or from pre-control to proficiency level. This is the example of punting in a spiral as, uh, which is contained in the book. You can see that pre-control is at the bottom. Those are different uh, tasks that can be done by that level. And then the top is the proficiency level. The last important concept about the movement concepts and skill themes is that they are basically described in the first two national standards that we have, the motor one and the cognitive one. Those are also parallel to the first and second standards of South Carolina's physical education standards. This is the end of podcast six, which covers chapter three.